Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Hey, where are you going? Champ? Slugger? Hey, cowboy? Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm going out! Hey everybody, it's Caleb here, and I've had a lot of people ask me about the three maxims of my show. I'm sure you're familiar with it if you've watched my program at all. They are speech isn't violence, tolerance isn't love, and disagreement isn't hate. And because of that, I've had people ask me what those mean and, and want to have a deeper understanding of them. So I figured what I would do today is go over the second one, tolerance isn't love. And I think that this is one that confuses people and why it's included in the motto of the show. Really what it boils down to is this. So often in our modern society, we start equating tolerance with love. In other words, we tend to think that because you tolerate someone that you love someone. And in fact, we've even elevated it to the form of ultimate love. Whether it's sin in regards to sexuality, which would include affairs, homosexuality, personal choices. In many ways, our society has made the only cardinal sin not being tolerant. And how they define not being tolerant is telling them that they're wrong on anything. So if you say to a homosexual person that they're engaged in a self-destructive lifestyle, for example, well then you're not being tolerant, it must mean that you hate them. That is not correct. And it's important to understand the differences between these two because the thing is, there is nowhere in the scripture that Christians are ever called to be tolerant. Not once. You will never see that word used in a Bible unless it was specifically put there and, and translated from a different world. And the reason for that is not that tolerance in and of itself is a bad thing. Tolerance is very often a good thing. I've often said that the greatest vehicle for tolerance is capitalism. People want to be able to preserve their business and their business interests and work in mutually beneficial relationships. And because of that, they tend to engage in business with people that are not necessarily people that they would normally agree with or gravitate to. And, and because of that, they can use their goods and services as ways to tolerate one another, even though they may live very different lifestyles and may not necessarily be friends. You can operate and engage in business with people that are outside of your normal circles of friends or your tribe, as it may be. And so capitalism does a very good thing. And you would think that somebody like me, who is very much a capitalist, would thus be in favor of tolerance. Well, here's the thing, I am. But it's important to define our terms here. Tolerance just means that I am not going to bring any harm to you because we may have a difference of opinion or come from different backgrounds, whatever it may be. And that in and of itself is a good thing. There's nothing wrong with tolerance. The fact that somebody grew up in a different place than me, the fact that somebody has a different color of skin than I do, the fact that somebody may not align with my religious beliefs or political beliefs, but I can still be civil and courteous and respectful of that person, that's a good thing. But it's the bare minimum. And that's the reason that Christians can't just stop at tolerance. And they can't just accept the world's definition of what it means to tolerate someone. And here's what I mean by that. I get this all the times when talking to people, especially that are parents and, and know a little bit more about this than me who doesn't have any kids. They'll say, is it the more loving thing to do to allow your kids to just do whatever they want? Or is it more loving to try to teach that kid what is going to be best for them in the future? Now, the kid may not like it at the time. The kid may resent you for making him brush his teeth or go to school or whatever you have to convince the kid to do or compel the kid to do. But ultimately, the reason that you're doing that is for their own preservation. And that's the same thing that we're talking about here. If I believe somebody is engaged in a sinful or evil lifestyle, the loving thing to do is to tell them that they're wrong. The loving thing to do is to talk to them about that. If, if I have somebody, for example, that's a drug addict, I can tolerate that drug addict. And by that I mean not look down on him, not treat him like he's a horrible person, not treat him like he's a drag on society or want him locked up or to destroy his life or anything like that. I, I can just 
you know, keep him at arm's length and technically be tolerant, the loving thing to do would be to intervene and try to get that person to stop the behavior that is destroying their life. That's what love is. And so it's funny to me that we keep getting preached to over and over again that we need to be tolerant, that we need to make sure we're tolerant, that we never offend anybody or say anything that would cause them to think less of themselves. That's simply not true. I'm not saying that we need to go around just pointing out flaws left and right, but if we do see something that is genuinely bad for somebody else, it is the loving thing to do to not be apathetic. Because if hatred is just an absence of love, then apathy is just as much hatred as resenting that person or treating them like they're less than human. It's a different form of hate, but it's hate nonetheless. And that's the reason that that maxim is there in the motto of my show, that tolerance isn't love. We should never confuse the two. Ultimately, we have to remember that love is what Jesus Christ called us to do, not tolerance. Tolerance is the bare minimum, and frankly, when it comes to Christians, if that's all we're doing, we're not doing what Jesus asked us to do. Because tolerance is not love. A recent survey showed that the average American spends, I kid you not, eight seconds reading a news story before either commenting on it or sharing it. That means that most people are barely finishing the headline before spouting out an opinion on content they didn't actually watch or read. Therefore, if you are watching this and made it to the end of this video, congratulations. You are, as Bernie Sanders would say, the 1%. So now it's totally appropriate to like and subscribe.